what is it really like traveling the world all by myself? Do I get lonely traveling the world? Yes. I have moments where I feel lonely, but I also had those moments when I was in the United States as well. In fact, I feel less lonely traveling the world than I do than I did back at home in Michigan. So let me break that down. Loneliness can be defined as being by yourself alone but you can be alone and not lonely you can be content being by yourself that is my temperament i do like spending time by myself and then you have loneliness where you feel disconnected you can be out with people and you just not feel connected and feel lonely there's a lot of people who are in relationships romantically platonic relationships and they just feel lonely even when they're out with dinner they keep hanging around people and they still feel lonely so when I, whenever I feel loneliness, it's usually because I'm not feeling connected to the people I'm with or the environment that I'm in. I felt more lonely in Spain than anywhere else in my travels. So I've been traveling for 10 months and I spent four and a half months in Europe, um, three months in Africa, and then I've been in Shanghai, Thailand as well. And Spain was unique to me. So I was in Barcelona and then I was in South of Spain. South of Spain is where I just really felt, I just didn't, I felt really disconnected. So I was going on tours, I love history and I was learning a lot. I felt disconnected, I think because I didn't really have anyone in person to share my thoughts with. And I just really felt like I was like, I don't know, outside looking in on what was happening to me in the South of Spain. It was really hot. And I said, I love the heat, but Granada and Sevilla let me know I do not love the heat like that. Um, it was like, it was like being in an oven. And it just, it was a different experience for me. And prior to that, I had been to Barcelona. Now Barcelona, I had a lot of fun in Barcelona. Um, and I met a great woman from Las Vegas. And we connected just because we both were looking to leave the United States as far as move permanently outside or at least set up a base outside the United States. And we were talking about all the things we wanted to improve in our lives. And, you know, could we find a better quality of life for these things that we were listing outside the United States? So I felt that connection with her and I met great people through her. But I stayed in the hostel in Barcelona and I was with a lot of younger people and I just felt like I was in college a lot of times. Like it was fun, but I'm like, this is not me <laughs> at all. Like I could do this here and there. It was like, um, I was authentic cause I had that con connection with her. But then outside of that, it was just like, okay, I just, this, I'm just here just to be here type of thing. One thing I'm noticing is that every time that I get a touch of home, I feel it's harder for me to bounce back and feel connected. And so before going to the south of Spain, I had went back to Paris and I was with a friend and her husband. And I was just, you don't have to explain yourself. People just know who you are. And I was loving that. And then I went to the south of Spain. So I feel like that had a lot to do with it. But I just really was like, I can go. <laughs> I don't have to come back to to uh, these places. And I did meet a great tour guide when I was in Granada. And when I first got to Granada, Spain, I was like, oh my God, it's beautiful here. Like, what's the cost of living? Like the scenery was like, oh, this is my vibe. But outside of that, no. I just realized I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Tasha and this channel, Tasha Journeys, is all about my journey traveling the world and providing travel inspiration and personal finance tips. So if you wanna be a part of my journey, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you won't miss a video when I drop one. Another time I felt lonely was when I was in Tanzania. And I met great people like in Tanzania who like Tanzanians, I should say. And I felt embraced. I felt like an outsider or disconnected just because they knew how to connect with me, but I couldn't connect with them. Like they could tell me about what was going on in the United States. They knew like popular music in the United States, but I couldn't tell them <laughs> anything about Tanzania. And so we were doing, like we would have conversations on relationships, career, like happiness and like feeling fulfilled, purpose, all that. And that's why I felt connected. But I just was like, dang, like, I don't know anything about your culture for real. So I was like frustrated with myself, not because I wasn't having meaningful conversations or feeling connected. 
and it got to the point where I had to step out, like set aside time to record a video that I posted on just like what I was feeling and why I was feeling these feelings. And it was hard for me when I first got to that country as well, because it was my first experience of culture shock. So those are the times where I felt lonely. That's literally it. Now I'm going to compare that to being completely by myself in a country I had, I did not have on my bucket list. And that was Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, I was alone a lot, but I was not lonely. So that's what I'm saying. I am a person that can spend time alone. And when I was with people, I was having meaningful conversations and I didn't feel that tug of war like I felt in Tanzania, like, oh, I don't know their culture because I didn't, I didn't really care to know the culture. I know that sounds wrong, but I was just like, I'm here because I just happened to stumble upon, upon <laughs> a cheap Airbnb by the mountains and I wanted to go hiking. And I had made up in my mind that if I didn't really meet anyone for a month, I was going to be fine with that. But versus my expectations when I went to Tanzania, I wanted to be social and all that stuff. So this is my experiences of like loneliness. Spain, a little bit in Tanzania. Outside of that, I didn't experience it. Bulgaria, I bring that up to say, I was completely fine being by myself. <laughs> and then with me not caring or having expectations, I met some of the greatest people ever. And then I felt embraced and welcome. I was hanging with Bulgarians, inviting, they invited me to their home. I was eating with them and driving that car, all of that, right? So my point is, is that loneliness for me anyway is two different things. A lot of times it's the connected side for me versus just being completely by myself. Every four to five years, I notice that I am trying to be on this growth path <laughs> or something. So I would say like in my early 20s, I was like obsessed with like, what's my purpose in life? And in my later 20s, it was, I want to become debt free to live the life I never had. And I want to just be able to not live uh, according to my paycheck and all this other stuff. And then it was fitness. It's like, my point is, it's something where I'm like, okay, I want to grow in this area. Like something sheds a spotlight on the area in my life I want to grow in. And I've always had this desire since 2011 <laughs> to travel the world. Desire just grew and grew and grew as the years went on. And my friends, some of them understood and some of them didn't. And that's fine. Like everyone in your life, your friends are not going to go through every growth period you want to experience. You're not going to go through that together. And my friends who I still talk to in Michigan, I don't expect for them to like do whatever I'm doing. Right. And it's just it wasn't their thing. They didn't know what to say because it is out of the box to be like, yo, I'm about to quit my job and I'm about to move outside the country. It's like, what? What? <laughs> Are you serious? Like, wait, what? And that was, so that's shocking, right? That's not just, oh, I'm about to start a business. That's kind of, that's out of the norm. So with that, this deep desire for me, I wasn't feeling connected because I had to start moving towards the life that would get me into the mindset to be able to travel by myself. And so what this looked like was, instead of me being frustrated when people would cancel on me last minute, it's like, okay, Tasha, you gotta start doing this stuff on your own anyway, right? Like you have to feel comfortable going out and exploring and not having people with you. And I like to be by myself, as I said it before, but I'm not gonna lie, like going to dinner by myself, going to the movies by myself, going to movies that I like going to the movies by myself. But like just doing certain things, I'd be like, I feel like I should be with my friends or I need to be with somebody. I shouldn't be doing this by myself. So I had to get out of my mind about that. Like, okay, go to the bar, just sit by the bar by yourself, like, and not be on your phone, like be present <laughs> because you're not gonna talk to people if you're on your phone. Because when you go outside the United States, you have to be present. If you look like you don't wanna be bothered, people are not gonna talk to you. And I had to keep in mind, I want to make sure that I'm meeting people and building a community as I travel. Me not feeling connected came from, I wanted to have different type of conversations with my friends. And this is because I was just moving on to something different. And they were like, wait, we always talk about this. We always did this. And I'm like, I want to do this different, right? And there's nothing wrong with what their decisions are and what they want to do. I'm just saying, I want to live my life a little bit different. So it became a little difficult of like, how do I foster these relationships that I have? 
and when I'm trying to move on to something else. So I balance it well, in my opinion. <laughs> I still like, I talk to my friends and I will say that's one hard thing since I've been traveling is keeping in contact with my friends. Maintaining my friendships is very important to me and it's becoming harder and harder as I travel because of the time zone difference. I haven't talked to people when they get off work and that leaves me only a couple hours to talk to people. So it's you. I have to really make it a point to make sure I text my friends, schedule calls because that has to happen when you're on different time zones and all of that because i i did not run away from my life in michigan i was running to like this new life and what that would look like and i want to make sure that i maintain those friendships and even relationships with my family members as i'm traveling so let's get on to how am i building community and making friends while i'm traveling how do i meet people while i'm traveling when i first started off i would do walking tours and i met a lot of solo travelers that way Another way is doing Airbnb experiences. So going to like the popular museum in the country with a tour guide. You're always gonna find fellow solo travelers doing that, doing a cooking class. Uh, whatever is popular to that country, city, if you book one of those on like Airbnb experiences or get your guide, you're gonna meet someone else who's there by themselves. And you have more of a genuine connection because you just did an activity. You wanted to do that activity for a reason, right? So those three ways, well, no, I missed the third one. Hostels is another way that I will meet people in person. So you can get a feel like, are we going to vibe or click right then? Another way is a non-in-person way is the Facebook groups. <laughs> this is basically putting an ad out like, hey, have lunch with me, be my friend. But in all seriousness, Facebook groups have been my lifeline for meeting people since I've been traveling. There's typically a expat or digital nomad group in every country. So expats in Bulgaria, expats in Thailand, and you'll see that. And then what I wanna do is I wanted to break that down even further and find the black people that's in that specific country. And so between those two type of Facebook groups, I always found someone to have lunch, dinner, or something with. And I know that may sound creepy, <laughs> like you just meet up with strangers because I'm gonna tell you I've never done that in Detroit I have never been like let me go on this Facebook group and try to meet people right but then you have Bumble for friends and people are like I want to make friends and I feel like in the United States I never thought about doing a Facebook group or going to a Facebook group to meet people but it's a way of doing it while you're traveling and I typically post a picture in the group and people respond and say hey I saw your picture they'll send me a message like hey you want to meet up for dinner and lunch or whatever it's typically women that i meet up with um i have met up with a couple in kenya i'm trying to think and the guy has showed up in portugal but it's usually women um who respond and say hey you want to meet up or whatever and then men they usually are at the more consistent meetup so in the expat groups you will see we're having a standing brunch we're having a standing dinner and you will see men there um so it's like a mix of men and women in those type of situations so that's how I meet people. It's very rare for me to meet people when I'm out doing regular things by myself because I don't approach people. I'm trying to get better at that, but I just be in my own little world. So like today at the gym, um, I met a, a guy who came and talked to me. He was like, you from the United States? We talked a little bit about that, but typically I meet people like doing an activity and we find out we're there by ourselves, but when I go to the bar by myself or have dinner by myself, it's very rare that I have people like approach me and I'm not really gonna approach nobody. So that's how I meet people traveling. If you're watching this video because you want insight on how you will build community once you decide to travel solo, I really encourage you to look inward and figure out your why for solo travel. If you're, especially if you're doing a year of travel like this, because I'm not running away from my life. And I have met people who are running away from their lives. Like they hate their life back where they left or never going back. They're like, that place could burn to the ground. I wouldn't care. And so when you meet those type of people, I'm not looking for a new best friend. I'm looking for someone to connect with in that moment, like have, share a meal with. We can stay connected. I'm not staying in this place for too long. And even if I am, I'm not 
in, of the mindset of like this you are my new focus and building all my new life out here is my focus right so just keep that in mind when i do find the place i want to have my base at it will probably be tricky for me to figure out how to balance all these relationships that i have now but i really think that's something you should keep in mind let me know in the comments if you are going through a growth phase in your life and you're finding it hard to connect with people in your life if you are i strongly suggest that you go or look for a therapist because i was at a point where i'm like i don't i'm not saying i don't want these people in my life because we're not on the same page but i needed to get all these feelings and thoughts out of where i was going next in my life this growth phase right and i do know that sometimes when you grow you can't take everyone with you i'm aware of that saying and it is true however if you are feeling disconnected in your loneliness therapy can help you because that's where i was i was feeling disconnected from the people in my life because of where i was going i hope this video gave you insight into what it's really like to travel the world solo if you have any questions for me Drop them below in the comment section and I will see you on the next one. Bye.